old pianos and grand pianos, waiting to be repaired in David Klavin's workshop south of Stuttgart. He's a trained piano maker and restores historic instruments. He noticed that the sound of upright pianos deteriorates over time, so he's working on a visionary new design for a piano of the future. An instrument the likes of which has never been built. My goal is to build the best sounding instrument in existence. Of course, that's not an objective measure. You can't judge sound objectively, but I want to be satisfied with it myself. I want to say to myself, that's the best I can get out of a piano. The specs on the planned Model 450 are awe-inspiring. It's vertical like an organ, two stories tall and weighs 800 kilograms. In this image, we see the main blueprint of a four and a half meter piano. Here's the podium. That's about three meters above floor level. Here's a piano stool, so you can imagine approximately where the piano player sits. At the Institute of Music Studies at the University of Tübingen, there's an early model of a super piano. Clavins built and unveiled it in 1987. Model 370 is the biggest piano ever built. You need to go up a flight of stairs just to reach the seat. The strings are up to three times longer than on a conventional piano, making the sound fuller. I want the lowest A to be better. It's really very good, better than any other low A in the world. But I want it to be as good as the A an octave higher. The piano's sound has been immortalized on various recordings. Among them, a performance by Polish soloist Slavomir Kowalinski in the late 1980s. A number of musicians have played entire albums on the piano, such as Thomas Duis, Gülsen Onay and Niels Fram. The Berlin-based producer and composer spent four nights locked up with the piano and just played where the spirit took him. What resulted was the album Solo, which was recently released. Instead of trying to play Bach and Chopin with increasing perfection, the classically trained pianist preferred to explore new worlds of sound, electronic sound. He liked David Clavin's Model 370 from the start. My first impression was overwhelming. The instrument is huge and takes up lots of space. You've got to go upstairs to get to it. Just climbing it is a special moment. I still remember exactly when I went up the stairs for the first time, sat down, stayed still for five seconds, and then played the first notes. It was amazing. Niels Fram joined in the excitement of building an even bigger piano. Late in March, he inaugurated Piano Day with the help of a website. It helps fans find out more about Klavins and his planned Model 450, and download the latest album by Niels Fram. Those who wish can make a donation, which goes towards the piano project. The thing about piano builders is they're very attached to the past and are afraid of change, as if they couldn't tear themselves away from what others had already developed. I hope this piano will be so great that it sends a signal through the piano building scene that you shouldn't just be content, that you should believe in yourself and strive to make great things even greater. This isn't the first collaboration of the two musical mavericks. In 2014, they created Una Corda, a stainless steel miniature piano. David Klavins designed the Una Corda especially for Fram as a light and compact piano that travels, perfect for global concert tours. Even if Klavins already created a unique piano 25 years ago, He's still searching for the perfect sound. Organ construction is my model. Then no one ever said you can't have 12-meter organ pipes. 
people built them big on purpose to get maximum sound out of them. I want to create piano sound and already look forward to the music I'll be listening to in spirit. The Model 370 has served its purpose for David Clavins, and if all goes well, his next creation will be unveiled on Piano Day 2017.